Hello friends, in this video we will be talking about counting spanning trees. So let's start with formal definition of trees. So let's say one particular structure, graph structure is given to us, right? And my claim is this particular structure is tree, right? So there are two components of this particular structure. This dots, dots are known as nodes or vertices and you can see lines between these dots, right? One dot one and dot two is connected by this particular line. This line is formally known as edge. So this is one graph and nodes and edges are nothing but component of this particular graph. Now let's try to understand the definition of tree. The definition says this particular first definition says this particular structure is minimally connected. So what do you mean by minimally connected? Minimally connected means you uh, if you remove one edge from this particular structure then structure will become disconnected and that one edge can be any edge for example if i remove one three then three will be disconnected if i remove two four then four will be disconnected disconnected means i won't be able to reach from two to four now in other words i can also say that between any pairs of vertices there is a unique path for example if i want to go from four to one then i need i must go via two only if I want to go from 3 to 2, then I must go via 1 only, right? So between any pairs of vertices, there, is, there exists a unique path, right? So that's the characteristic of tree, right? So the structure is connected and you can also notice number of edges. In, in this particular case, number of edges M is 3 and which is equivalent of saying 4 minus 1, where 4 is nothing but number of nodes. So in trees, number of edges will be exactly number of vertices minus 1, right? So this is one definition of tree. Now let's try to uh, analyze and understand the second uh, definition. The second definition says the structure is acyclic, right? So why this is true? So let's assume that let, let's say the structure is not acyclic. Acyclic means there is no cycle and let's assume what will happen if cycle is present. So let's say cycle is present between x and y and now as you can see there exist two paths from x to y right and this is in contradiction with our first observation right our first observation says that between any pairs of vertices there exists a unique path and if you have more than one path then the structure is not tree right so therefore the structure must be acyclic along with number of edges must be equal to n minus one because not every acyclic structure is tree for example what with okay so let me draw one structure which is acyclic but not tree why the second condition is important. So let's say this structure, as you can see, it's acyclic, but it's not tree. Why? Because number of edges is one and one is not equal to four minus one, right? So therefore it's not, uh, in this particular case, one is not equal to three minus one, right? So therefore it's not a tree. But why this particular second condition is important? Because if you have noticed, then structure must be connected. And if I want to make this particular structure connected, then I must add at least one edge, right? And now the structure is connected and the second condition is also satisfied. Now you can see number of edges is equal to two and two is nothing but three minus one. And now this particular structure is converted into a tree, right? So therefore the second condition is also important, right? Not just acyclic, but a number of edges must be equal to n minus one. Then this condition in some sense makes sure that the structure becomes connected right and that too minimally so now let's move on to the next definition which is nothing but spanning tree so now this uh, one cannot talk about spanning tree uh, independently right so this is in the context of some graph and to span means to cover and cover what here we want to cover all the vertices of the underlying graph so let's say my graph is like this one two, three, four, and this graph is known as cycle graph on four vertices, C4, and I want to find out spanning trees for this particular cycle graph. So what I need to do, I know the definition of trees now, trees are acyclic, so I must destroy this particular cycle, and there are four ways to destroy this particular cycle, and uh, with respect to each way, I will get one spanning tree. For example, if I remove this edge one, two, then I will get this first spanning tree. If I remove edge this Two, four, then I will get this particular second spanning tree, so on and so forth. So as you can see, why this particular structure is called spanning tree? The first thing is it's three. As you can see, it's minimally connected. Number of edges is equal to three. Number of vertices is equal to four. Three is equal to four minus one. So then, and it's also acyclic. So all the properties are satisfied. So therefore, this particular structure is tree. And why it's called spanning tree? Because it covers all the four vertices of the original graph, right? So therefore, it's called spanning tree. 
now what's what are the applications of spanning tree so there are number uh, number of applications right uh, ranging from computer networks to electrical grids but i i would like to highlight just one application let's say these are all possible connections between four cities right you can analyze uh, between four cities total six connections are possible right and all those connections are uh, denoted with the help of ages here now what i want to do i want to uh, develop let's say this four cities are disconnected as of now and i want to construct a road network which can connect all of this four cities and what should be my objective my objective should be to minimize the cost of doing so right so there are number of options i can go with this kind of graph structure also but now this structure is kind of unnecessary right because even if i consider this kind of structure where uh, as you let me also label this uh, cities now as you can see if i go with this kind of structure then i can reach from any city to any other uh, city right so therefore uh, i don't require more than this connection so only three connections are required or in other words only three road constructions are uh, required right and now the question comes which road construction uh, i should go with which configuration i should go with whether this kind of configuration or uh, let's say i can also have alternative solution like this i can also go with this kind of construction right right so there are many possibilities right so now the motivation of this class is to count how many different possibilities i have and then i can based on some criteria let's say my criteria is cost then with respect to each road construction there will be cost associated with it let's say 3 crores 2 crores 1 crores and then i can count what's the solution what's the cost of this particular configuration in total and then i i may go with the minimum cost right so that is one way of solving this particular problem but as you can see the potential solution of this particular problem is nothing but spanning tree and it may possible that you obtain two structures which are offering the same cost same minimum cost then what you need to do you, you can consider some other criteria like time right whichever solution takes less amount of time you can go with that particular solution right so, okay so this is motivation why this particular topic is relevant for right? uh, counting spanning trees okay so now when can we say uh, two spanning trees are different right so whenever the underlying h uh, h set is different then we uh, let's say i have set of uh, t1 tree i have h set of t2 tree and if h set is different then i will say these two trees are different right so that, that this is our setup and now we can go from uh, node 1 to node 2 uh, and uh, up to node 4 so with respect to node 1 only one possibility so only one spanning tree exists with respect to two nodes there is one way to connect these two nodes so only one spanning tree with respect to three nodes three different ways right so so underlying graph structure is like this and there are three different ways to destroy this particular cycle and therefore three different spanning trees are possible if uh, for this particular graph structure and for k4 as you can see 16 different spanning trees are possible and they are listed over here right so the problem is not trivial right as you can see if i increase number of nodes then number of options options will increase in terms of connections and therefore number of uh, spanning trees will also increase right so now the formal formula is like this if uh, n voltages are given to us then total number of spanning trees uh, distinct spanning trees are nothing but n this to n minus 2 and this is quite a large number for example if n is equal to 4 then the number is 4 this to 4 minus 2 which is nothing but 4 this to 2 which is nothing but 16 but what if n is equal to let's say 5 then it's 5 Raised to five minus two, which is nothing but five cube, which is nothing but one twenty-five. So if even for the small value like five, uh, we are obtaining one twenty-five different options, right? So now uh, let's understand how this number comes, right? So this is also known as Kelly's formula. And before that, we can go with one simpler solution, uh, one simpler uh, problem, where let's say the underlying graph is cycle, and let's say it's cycle on n vertices. If this is the case, then we can generate n different Uh, spanning trees because we have already analyzed uh, that we have already noticed that trees are acyclic. We must break the cycle, and there are n distinct ways to break the cycle, and therefore n distinct spanning trees are possible for C n. And this number n raised to n minus two is basically for K n complete graph on n vertices where we are assuming that all connections are present. So now how this solution is derived? Let's let's try to understand it. So for that we need we must understand this particular uh code which is known as proofer code or proofer sequence so let's let me explain how this sequence is generated and then we will see how this value comes and this to n minus 2 so the idea is quite simple what we need to do 
we will first analyze which are the leaf nodes. Leaf nodes are nothing but nodes with degree 1 in this particular tree. Right? So I have circled this uh, leaf nodes and what I will do, I will consider the node which has least value. Right? C, 7, 6, 8 and 5. So the least value is 3. So I will remove this 3 and I will write the neighbor of 3 which is nothing but 4. So this is my revised uh, tree and I have generated 4 in my sequence. Okay? Now I will repeat the process. Now again 6, 7, 8, 5. So minimum is 5. So I will remove 5 and write down the neighbor. Right? Uh, okay, so now 1 has become leaf node now because I have removed 5. So 1 is leaf. So 1, uh, 8, 6 and 7. Minimum is 1. So I will remove 1 and write down the neighbor which is nothing but 2. Right? Okay, so the sequence will go like this. Now I have 6, 8 and 7. So minimum is 6. So I will remove 6 and write down the 4. Next time I have 4, 8 and 7. So out of this the minimum is 4. So I will write down 4 and uh, I, I will remove 4 and write down 2 here which is there. And now I have two options, 8 and 7. So I will remove 7 and write down 2 over here. Right? So this is my sequence, 4, 1, 2, 4, 2, 2. And uh, only one edge is remaining. So at this point of time, I will stop here. Right? So now, as you can see, for given tree of length, as you can notice, it has 8 vertices. I have generated a sequence of length 6. And this I can do uh, in the context of any tree. So for n length uh, tree or for the n vertex tree I will have sequence of length n minus 2 and each location of this n minus 2 length sequence can be filled with any of one possible value out of n. So basically it's n into n into n because I have n options to fill the first spot, I have n options to fill the second spot, I have n options to fill the third spot so on and so forth and I have total n minus 2 uh, slots. So therefore the number is like this n is 2 n minus 2 and this ma this many different proofer codes I can generate and corresponding to each proofer code I can apply the process which I have just explained reverse of that particular process so that I can generate a unique tree for the each proofer sequence right so there is basically bijection one to one and onto mapping with respect to this sequence and tree right so therefore n this to n minus 2 different proofer codes are possible and therefore on n vertex graph n this to n minus 2 different trees are or different spanning trees are possible right so uh, this is uh, but this observation is true only for complete graph so this number is fine but it's only for complete graph on n vertices so what's the objective of this tutorial that right? I, I i just want to motivate you what's the significance of prims or kuskas algorithm what they are doing basically they are finding out the best possible cost effective solution out of n this to n minus 2 potentially different uh, configurations right and that too in polynomial time right so uh, this is the motivation right uh, what's the complexity of the underlying problem right how many different solutions uh, one need to look for in the brute force manner if we don't have prims or kruskas algorithm right so i just wanted to highlight that part but now again let's come back to the original problem of counting spanning trees this is fine for k and we have obtain this particular number but what about any other graph not all the graphs are complete graph right we can have graphs like this also right how to find out uh, total number of spanning trees which are possible for this graph so for that particular purpose we have Kilchoff's matrix T theorem so let's try to understand how this particular theorem works uh, so I will uh, explain this particular theorem in the context of this example only right so the same graph I have drawn here so what I am going to do here first I will talk about adjacency matrix so adjacency matrix as you can see uh, the rows are nothing but nodes, columns are also nodes and if uh, the underlying pair is connected then I will put 1, otherwise I will put 0. All the diagonal entries are 0 because there are no solid loops, 1 is not connected to 1, 2 is not connected to 2, 3 is not connected to 3, 4 is not connected to 4 and all other edges are listed over here and as you, have, as you can notice this particular structure is symmetric. Now this is my adjacency matrix and it's easy to uh, define this. Now. I will talk about one more matrix which is called degree matrix. So in degree matrix what I will do, I will write down degrees of each and every vertex in the diagonal and all other entries will be 0. right? So degree of 1 is 3 so I will write down 3 here, degree of 2 is 2 so I will write down 2 here, degree of 3 is 2 so I will write down 2 here over here and degree of 4 is 3 so I will write down 3 over here, all other entries will be 0 and now I will talk about this particular matrix which is called Kirchhoff's matrix which is basically D minus A and this matrix is written over here. And now what I need to do, 
I need to remove any one of the row of this particular uh, matrix and also one column. So for example, I can remove first row and first column and whatever structure which is remaining, I can find out its uh, determinant. The determinant value will give me total number of spanning trees possible for this particular structure. So for example, in this particular case, the answer is 8. So you can find out determinant of this particular structure, it will give you 8 or you can also talk about some other uh, cofactor, right? M23, right? Uh, you can talk about this particular cofactor, it will also give you the same answer, which is nothing but 8. Thank you.